Hey guys, it's Amy Wadsworth at 804 Sycamore. Thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy DIY and decorating tutorials. I have lots of ideas coming up, so make sure to press that notify button so you're always alerted when a new video pops up. Um, for today's project, I'm really excited to share it with you. This was made with my eight-year-old daughter in mind. She loves um, journals that lock and hidey spots and anything that's kind of secret and mysterious. And so I thought this would be a really cool way to create a hidden spot for her, add some artwork onto the wall, um, and just do something fun. And so I, I was thinking about it and I thought, you know, this project would also be good to cover that weird thing on your wall that it just kind of, maybe it's like in the center of a wall and it always makes putting up pictures or wall galleries or whatever, it makes it odd. This might be a project just for that weird little spot where you can add some dimensional artwork, still access the weird thing on the wall, and create a beautiful wall gallery while you're at it. So without further ado, let's get started. Your first step is to find a frame. I had this vintage frame on hand and I actually selected it because it was 16 by 20 inset and that's a size I can easily print a picture for. So then I took measurements of the outer frame and I didn't measure, um, for the width I measured just under 20. I didn't want, um, I didn't want the secret compartment to stick out beyond the frame. I want it to be inset a little bit. And so um, you'll, it's up to you, but it, I think it looks better if the frame comes out a little bit along the edge. And then I just um, cut all my one by threes at once. I use this clamp just to make it easier to get them perfect, the exact same length. And then for my shelves, I actually just have one shelf. You can do as many as you'd like. Um, you just, if you're using one by threes, you just take your width and subtract um, an inch and a half because the thickness of the board is three quarters of an inch. So um, once you have your frame and your shelves cut, you, you can set it up on the frame um, as if it were attached. And at this point, that's when I go ahead and I mark where my pocket holes are going to go. For the top of a box like this, your top piece is going to go all the way from end to end, but your bottom piece fits in. So my shelf and my bottom piece are the same length and my top piece is an inch and a half longer. Um, once you have your pocket holes marked, I love to use this Craig ergonomic pocket hole drill. It saves my shoulder and I love the way it clamps down. You can easily adjust your drill setting. Um, it's actually been a lifesaver. And there are my pocket holes. Once all the pocket holes are done, um, you can sand any frayed edges that you would like. Um, just to make sure that wherever you marked your pocket holes, that you face that down because the drill comes up from the bottom. Um, I did make the mistake once of, of having my pencil marks on top and that was a bummer because I didn't like that side of the wood. So. Once you have your pocket holes done, go ahead and set it up on a nice flat surface. I'm using wood glue and this Craig clamp. It, the clamp has one end that goes into the pocket hole and then a flat side to, so it doesn't mar the wood. And then I just used a board so that the clamp could be on it. And once you get in one screw, by the way I used um, one and a half inch screws, then you can add the second one no problem. Um, I didn't, I don't add a ton of glue because I don't want it squishing out, making a mess everywhere, but it really does help to make a good product and have it be solid and not wobbly. It adds that extra structure that you're going to want. And um, I always like to attach the top piece first and you want to make sure all the sides are flush um, and everything is good to go and then the clamp sets it just right. And then once the top and sides are on, the bottom just fits right in there perfectly. And then you can go ahead and add shelves. Now in hindsight, I probably would have wanted to add one more shelf because my daughter is putting little knickknacks in the secret compartment shelf, but I thought I would only just do one so that she could put some taller items, but 
it's really up to you something to think about when you are designing it. Now for the shelf construction, I went ahead and grabbed a piece of scrap wood. I like using scrap wood to kind of guide um, the location instead of measuring and using a pencil mark. I feel like this is much easier and then it's perfectly level. Um, I didn't use glue on the middle shelf, um, but that's up to you. Now I am plugging my pocket holes and once the glue is dried, then I just used a multi-tool to go ahead and cut them flush with the wood. Then go ahead and use an orbital sander or a palm sander or just a sanding block and um, go ahead and sand your um, plug spots. Now what I did is after I cut the plugs, I went ahead and added some wood filler because um, there was some spots that I just wanted it nice and smooth and um, sustainable and so once you go ahead and sand it flush and make sure it dries I I have wood filler that dries pretty quick but I did go ahead and wait 24 hours um, once you make sure it's dry you can sand all of it and then go ahead and take um, a rag to fully clean it now I like to take a leaf blower blow it off and then wipe it clean I don't want any dust or debris and then, of course, you can stain it, sand it, you could leave it uh, bare pine, maybe just put a finishing layer on it or something. I love to use uh, Roven Dwell stain. It's a whey-based stain, so it has absolutely no odor. Um, and I love the color. This is Farmhouse. It is a little bit on the spendier side, but I feel like having no fumes and being the perfect color that I'm after is worth it and this pint goes a very long way and so I like to use a staining sponge versus a brush just um, use whatever's your preference I prefer the sponge because I can really get into corners and I can wipe it smooth there's no excess there's no drips it's just a method that works best for me so once your stain is completely dry um, it's ready to you can move on to the next step um, I got these full range um, hinges. They are one and a half inch hinges. I picked this size because of the size of my frame, my cabinet, and um, go ahead and mark your spots, drill your pilot holes, and then attach it. Now I used the screws that came with the hinge, and if you do use different screws, just make sure the screw has the same head. So if your hinge comes with flat screws, which is, I think, the, the typical type of screw. You're not going to want to use a smaller or larger rounded head screw. It will mess up with the hinge totally closing flush. So keep that in mind when you're attaching this. And I am um, i didn't make sure this part was perfect as far as how much space along the top, how much space along the bottom. Um, I just wanted it to fully support the door and go ahead and I used some boards to prop up my frame and that allowed me to perfectly line up the frame where I wanted it lined up with the cabinet marked my spots pre-drill and then I just used a screwdriver because this is a very old vintage frame the wood is a little bit softer and I didn't want to over screw or anything like that now that your frame is attached, you can go ahead and add a magnet uh, closure. If I didn't add a magnet closure, my frame would not stay closed, and so that would defeat the purpose. Now my one regret in choosing this magnet is that it is the hulk of all magnets. Um, I wish I would have used a bit weaker magnet, but I liked the flush look. I liked that it was streamlined and I liked that it was strong. I just didn't realize how strong it was. So go ahead and mark your spots pre-drill and then go ahead and attach it. And if it doesn't line up absolutely perfectly, it's not gonna matter. The magnet will still attach. Now these are just little picture fasteners and I used about three on the sides um, and I think I used just three or four on the top and bottom. I just kind of evenly spaced them and I didn't 
have to pre-drill because my frame is a little bit softer wood like I mentioned and the screws are so tiny um, that it, it worked out. Now don't fully tighten these because um, you're going to do that part next, which is now. So I went ahead and I took my print out from Walmart. I just printed my vintage image on a poster board. Very affordable, turned out beautiful. And then I got a piece of um, foam core board from the dollar store. So super affordable. And then I'm now I'm um, moving over the fasteners and tightening each one. And it looks like I just put two um, on the sides and three on the top and bottom. So this was plenty to keep in a, a skinny piece of poster board and a really lightweight piece of foam core. And maybe I overdid it, but I, I just didn't want, I didn't want the artwork to be loose or um, flapping around. So now that it's pretty much constructed, you can go ahead and add your hanging hardware. Now this is another point in hindsight. I wish I would have went down to Home Depot or Lowe's and grabbed different hanging hardware, but this is what I had on hand. And when it's hanging on the wall, you can see it. Um, but I didn't mind. This is for my daughter's bedroom. Um, if that's just an aesthetic thing that you might want to consider. Go ahead and mark your spots for the hardware and then do your pilot holes. And then you can go ahead and attach them using the screws that came with them. At this point, once the hanging hardware is on, you are ready to install it. And here is my daughter's bedroom, and this is where I hung it. It looks like a beautiful piece of vintage artwork in my old vintage frame. Um, it's right above her little coat hooks, and um, I mean, she just loves it. There, We had an old cuckoo clock on this wall, and the battery went dead, and it, we just never replaced it. So this was a perfect spot. She loves putting her money and her rocks and treasures and looks like some candy. So um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, and be sure to subscribe for a lot more fun DIY and decorating tips and inspiration coming your way. So thanks so much for watching.